you're married. I had an opportunity to meet your husband. One of the dopest brothers, you know, that I've had the opportunity to meet as a husband because one thing that I, I noticed with you two is we both met at our, one of our mutual friends event, um, Sean, Sean Cannell, who's a dear brother of mine, um, who I say is a YouTube guru of gurus. Yeah. Um, like yeah. him. Everyone's watched him. Like, if you love YouTube, you're yeah, watching you Sean. Start a channel, you know who Sean is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so um, Aaron and I had the opportunity to speak for his his big conference um, last year, and Aaron completely killed the stage. Mm -hmm. um, but what I loved was her seeing her husband, you know, supporting her, rooting for her, following her around with the camera. I mean, this man was just just rocking that. I'm curious, Aaron, how do you and your husband, you run this business, um, he's in a, a, a total successfully career space. How do y'all work together as a as a couple um, and, and building such a huge legacy? Because you're a content creation space. I won't say what he's in because he's in a, a very you know high level position. I want to respect that privacy for the family. Uh, but it's like, how do y'all do that as a couple, spend time and still make money in the legacy part? So Cameron, he's actually an engineer, so I'll just say that much. But he he is able to, like, he's so great at his actual nine-to-five job that he has a lot of extra time to devote to our business as well. Mm. So everyone thinks that he works for me, like, works for Aaron On Demand full-time. It's both of our businesses. But he, they think he works just Aaron On Demand all the time, and he still balances his nine-to-five very well. But... I would say the biggest thing for us is that when I first started my channel, Cameron was the first person to actually invest in something for it. And he bought me a ring light. This is when we were still dating. Like I had no gear. I had a camera and that was it. So I had the camera sitting on a little tripod. I didn't have any lighting. I was just using natural light and he bought me a ring light and I was just like oh my gosh this is so sweet of him like he is really like invested it just showed it showed me more than just the ring light it was like he's really supporting what i was doing when aaron talked about her husband was the first investor uh, when they were dating that that touched me man because i think oftentimes men we think uh, that we should be the breadwinner the prize winner we should have it all but you know sometimes how come we just can't invest into our spouse invest into our loved ones so you know what i want to help you win and let's win together and so, yo, tops off to all the men out there who are saying, you know what, I'm going to help you win. I'm going to still be a man and hold down the fort, but I'm going to be a man and help you win as well. Yo, let's win. <laughs> Baby girl, <laughs> I got you. And as time has gone on, he's just been like, right there. And for me, I need that. Like, there's mm -hmm. no way that I would have been able to grow the channel without the support of him because, for one, he's my videographer. For two, he's my editor. Um, so he edits all of my videos. Wow. And then, yeah. And then, because um, I have multiple editors before, and I was like, we just need to edit in-house. It's so much easier. So I taught him how to edit, and now he's a better editor than I am. So he is like, he just takes on whatever he needs to do to help the business grow. And that's the kind of spouse that I needed for this type of job, because it is a lot. It's very demanding. Like, it takes a lot of time. It's very fast paced. And if he wasn't able to, like, step in and, and just do what needs to get done, then we wouldn't be where we are. So I think for us, it's like managing the time well, like him knowing when to work his job, him knowing what deadlines we have for content and then us always prioritizing like our personal time that just doesn't get recorded going out on dates like having fun together and even when we did uh like the conference like we will add a few extra days on to like speaking engagement so we can just hang out and have fun and enjoy a place because that's like we need that you know so I, I I'm I'm here for all the husbands who the the content creator husbands who be stepping in, becoming photographers, videographers, editors for their women who are like, you know, they're letting them shine, but they're also shining in our lives in the in the background that most people just don't see. So one of the things I think that you you've been really good at, right, is you know your content buckets and content lanes, mm -hmm. right? But then also I see your husband in it. And then you are you all were very public about purchasing y'all's new dog, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's like at the same time, I didn't feel like that was too personal. 
Like, yeah. I don't see two, 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 like, oh, okay, like, that's whoa, that we, that's TMI, Aaron. You know, it's like y'all ride that line on, hey, here's our life, but you're not getting too personal. Yeah. And I think a lot of people believe, like, on YouTube, if you ain't being real personal, you're not going to win. Yeah. How do you balance, like, give us some suggestions on people who want to be bloggers like yourself. How do you ride that line? How do you create that boundary of, okay, this is for our, our family, but yeah. this is not going to be for our family. So I, I always say there's a distinction between personal and personable. Ooh. And I ride the personable wave. Like I am a very people person. Like I will talk to you. I will look you in the eyes. Like I just, I'm in locked in with the camera when I'm talking to it and I'm telling small stories. Like all of those things help to create a personable feeling. And most people don't need to know all these fishy details about your inner life. Um, to feel that connection with you. Like if I wake up and I still have my scarf on or if I'm praying in the morning or if I'm like, those are little nuggets of my life that people are able to relate to. And that's enough for most mm -hmm. people. So you can straddle the fence on the personable side. That doesn't mean that you have to give all the details of your life. And for me, there's just certain things that are off limits. Like mm -hmm. we don't really uh take the camera on dates like they're just i don't take it to family gatherings birthday parties like i need to be locked in in those moments but i use i talk about my family a lot i talk about things that are you know personable personal to me but in a personable way mm -hmm. i also tell people to go like narrow but deep like i will tell a lot of things about entrepreneurship and about you know, what I'm going through in that. If I'm going through a dip in my business, I don't mind sharing those types of details uh, because that's my lane. Like I'm cool with being narrow in that and going deep and and that's about it. Like I'm not going narrow, but deep into my marriage. Like that's just off limits. So I think that picking is not so much about niching in my opinion, as much as it is about like having something that you're okay with diving deeper into than other aspects of your life that you share. <sighs> Whew. And, and that, that's real good. Cause you actually got me convicted a little bit. I think I get a little, probably a little bit too personal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think I need to start riding that line of being personable. Yeah. Cause the personable thing is more of like your personality. Like I'm just like, well oh, child, like let me tell y'all about what just happened. Like I, I can really like pull people in with my personality. And so I use that to my advantage. So good. And that is, that's where people end up going. They think they know it's like perception is reality where people think they know more than they actually Ooh. do. So, you know, Hey, I'm about to, <laughs> y'all, y'all. Y'all, y'all gonna think y'all know, but y'all really don't know as of today. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron, for teaching me that one, girl. <laughs> All right, Aaron, so let, let's give them some practical tips, right? So you've built this successful, you and your husband have built this successful business. And hey, um, I take my hats off to um, all husbands who can support their wives and their spouses. Ted, let's be real. This dude was... This, this was this was his woman. This wasn't even his fiance or wife. And he said, let me sow into your future. And there was no guaranteed ROI on his investment from her. And so, I mean, heads off to, to my brother. Hey, man, love you, bruh, uh, because you're giving me an example, which I would do that now. If my woman said, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is where I'm going, I will be the very first person uh, to sow into that future because it's very important. Y'all are building together and y'all are building a legacy together. And as a black person, when the average uh, black person right now is making about $42,000 a year, the um, average household income is right around $64,000 a year household income. Um, I mean, you're doing 50,000 plus. Yeah, I want y'all to put the keyword there, y'all. The keyword that is not 50,000, it's plus. The fact that you keep adding this plus to has me so weak. Like, you are not forgetting the plus, Andrew. What? <laughs> <laughs> because I want people to see that you can win. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you can win. And this is what I love about, about Aaron. I said, Hey, what, what, where you come to? She said, um, you know, I told people thousand, 50,000 a few months ago, but, uh, it's plus now. So <laughs> she didn't give us personal. She said, I'm gonna be personable. It's 50,000 plus. <laughs> and so I think that's important because I think a lot of people don't think you can win. 
You know, my brother-in-law is a uh, belief in fatherhood. And I remember, I tell the story often, um, you no, know, Glenn, I remember when he first came back home and my sister came back home, Yvette Henry, and she said, hey, my, my husband Glenn is going to quit to go be a YouTuber. I said, no, the heck he ain't. Uh, that's my show. I can say this. No, the hell he ain't. A YouTuber? <laughs> what? He ain't making no money. And now he's built a million dollar plus business off of YouTube.